Okay, I'll read this one poem. I happen to like it. Okay. Uh, and it's about New Orleans, but it's about a trip uh, to New Orleans before I moved here. I lived here for about, well, I lived here that summer. Um, so this is about New Orleans, and it's called Thunder and Rain. I hear my neighbors cuckoo, my wife's slipper scraping from rug to toilet, and turning I see the chameleon come down to drink and peer. It sings the hour, her cuckoo, and over the hall rug goes its solo. I place the newspaper on the couch. I hear her breathing in the bedroom and she half mad awaiting my permissions, and I, like that neon chameleon, its throat pus pulsing, its whole body rigid. Cuckoo, 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 nine times as I walk with the picayune up the corridor beside her door, through which I heard one evening mournfully singing and saw the door open once and everything seemed made of bamboo. A snapshot. Shirtless black man loading sacks of flour into a boxcar, white powder on black sweat gleam like two people in the same pants. I stare down into the garden as she turns the pages. What analogies survive the real? Clock coughs, a knock at the gate. Come in, O oh sweet southerner with hair parted on both sides, bowing and making the moment lustrous, for I have been a prisoner in both camps, and I can assure you, and lay listening to the clock until the black leaves were fanged with blue, and over and over in dream carried out the same idiot package, the same ransom of snakes, I can assure you, and sat at the tomb gate laughing and knocking, cuckoo, cuckoo, a snapshot, red handkerchief head, black mama, six foot six cotton dummy outside praline shop, eternal smile. I'm tired of everything always being a battle. I'm tired of always putting what you want first as though what I wanted was by definition crazy or neurotic. I'm tired of my needs being just plain less important as though some god were measuring feelings on a scale and could say that what you want measures 10 pounds and what I want measures three until I am sitting in the blue monkey Vucare on a stool in the Blue Monkey Vucare beside a lady storage battery in bulging green by the knit cleaved at the neck and a scarlet earring revolving with the earth. Outside the monkey doors is a luminous ditch between buildings the tourists row with their legs. I am extremely drunk. I am at one of those zeniths when all dangers and all safeties are equal. Then, just as suddenly as saying it, I'm squatting in a vegetable stink doorway and bending over me is the silver jaw of a drunk who keeps calling me brother, 
who thinks we are in the same boat. Go away, go away. Ah, the tourists avoid my gaze. I have become the odious lump. And who knows, knife under khaki? I have passed into the ultimate disguise, invisible even to myself, squatting gaze fixed on moving face ovals that bloom and slam shut, detached into a kind of serenity, tranquilly passes the two-layered bayou of flesh, tranquilly the cattle following the one before who follows the one before who follows the one who thinks it hears the bell. It looks like rain looks. I can see her lips moving. I know she is talking. I've ventured the mirror ventriloquists sit in. The clacking mouths of their dummies slowly become pliant. Everything is kissing itself, but all I can hear is the self-sized parrot pure whisper, chicken shit, chicken shit, chicken shit. It was about to rain. So I was walking between two buildings when I came upon a pile of baseball caps which were obviously being thrown away. So I knelt and began trying them on when along passed two young women, one of them very pretty, and we nodded and I returned my attention to the caps when the pretty one came back and knelt beside me and then her hands were in my hair and her mouth on mine, wet and taking and yielding and while I was astonished, I was also willing to see where this went, at which point it began to rain very hard, which I could see from the corner of my eye was ruining the cap and I thought, shit, I really wanted one of those caps. And then I realized to my further astonishment that although it was raining on us, we were not getting wet, at which point her partner, whom I had barely noticed, slipped her hands between my legs from behind and I thought, now wait a minute now, this is actually getting a little scary. I mean, what if one of them has a knife? But nothing happened and who am I? So I put my hand along the pretty one's side and began gently to fondle her breast. At least I thought it was gentle, at which point she said, hey, and pulled back like I was trying to start something. And I felt this wave of embarrassment and injustice because I was completely minding my own business when she started this and now she acts like I'm the rapist. So then all her actions take on this very touch-me-not tone, while at the same time her partner has actually unzipped my pants and is slowly working her fingers in side. Well, I can tell you the contradictory information coming in at both ends of my body was about more than I could handle, and that's all I can remember. Chicken shit. A snapshot. I asked the alcoholic-faced gas station owner, where is the Lafayette Cemetery? And he says, up Washington, about five blocks in the niggers. The tour buses don't stop there no more. I'm telling you, these niggers. A wave of embarrassment and injustice as I realized that we, the two white ones, have climbed into the back seat and he, the black one, is driving and anyone to anyone outside it looks like two little white dolls being chauffeured, at which points he spots a pair of nurse's shoes in a trash can and stops the car and gets back in and holds them up in his black hand they are blinding. The blue monkey, the blue monkey. All you do is make up excuses to justify your own fears. And I'm tired of playing second fiddle to your refusal to risk anything. I'm 33 years old and for five years I've been living in that same apartment just because you didn't want the hassle of something like having our mail forwarded. Well, I'm tired of giving in just because the cost of winning is too great. The blue monkey, the blue monkey. The gas jets, beautiful in the darkness. Perish the thought and the senses perish. And when the senses are flooded, as when a cathedral, thought perishes and is reborn repeatedly. And when the senses at carnival yield to the deluge, the excess, all the identity you have carved in thought 
perishes like a monkey on a stove's crown-shaped gas jets in darkness, bluer and bluer as he vanishes. And the rain is brain-colored, and the thunder sounds like something remembering something. Finney.